Hello everyone, Thomas Man261 here and welcome to another video. As I just mentioned, I'm going to be ranking all of the Thomas and Friends series from what I consider to be the worst, from what I consider to be the best. Please remember while watching this video that my opinion isn't the right opinion, it's just my personal preference. There will be a lot of biased opinions in this list, so just keep that in mind and be sure to leave your rankings for the Thomas and Friends series in the comments below as I would love to hear your opinions as well. And without further ado, let's get started. Coming in at last place, we have season 15. I'm sure this came to no surprise for anyone, and for good reason, this season lacks pretty much everything. While season 9 to 14 did more or less the same as this series did, this one just did it so much worse. It's home to some of the worst episodes of all time and has no good episodes whatsoever. The voice acting is atrocious in both English dubs, and the series as a whole is just so dull. Just missing out on last place is season 14, by far the most forgettable series on this list. The issues that this series has are more or less the same as the ones that series 15 has. Bad character choices, terrible voice acting, repetitive rhyming and alliteration, I could go on and on. Overall, a horrible series. Coming in at the 24th spot is season 12, one of the ugliest pieces of Thomas Media that has ever existed. Now, this series as a concept could have very well worked. The idea of having CG faces on the models and even having them on in tracking shots sounds really cool. And at the time, it probably looked great, but now in 2021, yeah, it's aged horribly. Something that a lot of people forget is that this season was the first season to primarily use the Three Strikes formula in every episode. And my god, is it horrible. This season is also home to the worst narration of any season of Thomas. I love Angelus, but my god, he was just awful here. And with Brandon, he's always been bad. The rest of the world really should have followed in Japan's footsteps here by not showing this series at all. Coming in at the 23rd spot, we have season 23. Now, if you look at this series with just the Sodor episodes, then you've got an okay series. Not a good one, but just okay. Now, where this series goes wrong is the international episodes. In particular, Digs and Discoveries. Digs and Discoveries is by far my least favourite piece of Thomas Media, full stop. I remember watching Digs and Discoveries and not even making it the full way through, and to this day, I haven't seen all of it. It was that bad. The new characters were one-dimensional and bland, the bouncing was at its absolute worst, the colours were washed out and looked ever so dull, and the fact that Henry and Edward were completely neglected and got no episodes to themselves in this season is ridiculous. The only good thing I can say about the series is that, well, I mean, Steam Team to the Rescue was okay, and the song Don't Stop is decent. Overall, an absolute shit show. And the same can be said about its predecessor, Season 22. The first season in the Big League Adventures era. Much like season 23, this season is really let down by the international episodes. Episodes like Thomas Goes to Bollywood and that stupid panda one have some of the ugliest animation I think I've ever seen in Thomas. The only reason why I've put this season above season 23 is because there are a couple of Soda episodes, mainly Hunt the Truck, that are genuinely really good and if you take out some of the CGI aspects and characters, you've got a classic episode on your hands. It's just a shame that episodes like that are very few and far between. Something else I'd like to complain about is those segments at the end and at the start of each episode. The segment at the start is literally telling you what's about to happen, like th there's no need. And during the end segment of the episode, Thomas literally just reminds you what just happened 30 seconds ago. Why? We literally just saw it. Why? 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 You're just trying to pad out runtime. What is it? Next up is season 16. Definitely one of the better CGI Miller seasons. Now, don't get me wrong. This season is miles better than everything we've just covered, but it still isn't good. The Narrow Gauge Engines making their CGI debut was also a nice aspect, even if Duncan isn't there. Which is pretty sad because he's probably the best one there is. <laughs> also, Bust My Buffers is a pretty cool concept and it's an episode that I unironically enjoy and I just don't know why, I just think it looks cool. But despite its very few merits here and there, it's not very good. Not much has changed. Around 85% of the episodes are still awful, and the animation is as dull as ever. Next up is season 13. 
uh, I'm kind of nostalgic for this one. Yeah, as a kid, I got all three season 13 releases for Christmas, and at that time, I adored them. But now, uh, yeah, n no, n just just no. The animation in this season is um questionable, and it really hasn't aged well. There are some good moments with the animation, like in the early bird and in Splish Blast Blosh, but for the most part, it looks really, really bad. I would comment on the Mr. Perkins segments on the DVDs, but this is not a DVD review, so I'll leave it. All in all, the season is bad. It has a couple of good episodes, and by good, I mean nostalgic ones. This season ain't it, Chief. Coming in at 19th place is season 24. The most recent Thomas season and the last one to be made. No, I do not count whatever the f this is. Disgusting. When I tell you I can't remember what episodes are in this season by the two double length episodes, I mean it. It's that forgettable. And it came out less than a year ago. The Royal Engine is eh. Marvelous Machinery is abysmal, and everything else ranges from awful to okay. Really not a good season to go out on. Up next is season 10, definitely the worst model season, period. When writing these scripts, I can almost always think of one good episode, but here, there really are none. Actually, you know what, let's go over the issues of season 10, one by one. Why are there 28 episodes? Why is Edward Strikes Out a thing? Why is Thomas's Frosty Friend a thing? Why are the new characters so dull? Why is Michael Brandon's narration painful? It's me! Why can't Angela say Clarabelle right? Clarable. 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 And why are they still using these stupid tracking shots? Okay, I'm done. Next one. Up next is season 9. Name one difference between season 9 and 10. Exactly. There is none. Next one. And finally, we get to the season where I don't want to die while watching. Season 11 is a weird one for me. It's probably the best hit series visually, but episode-wise, it's still not very good. It does have some good episodes like Hector the Horrid and Dream On, and it honestly showed hope. It's just a shame that this was a one-time thing. I'm going to get someone who's a big fan of season 11 to fill in the rest of this section for me. Take it away, Jakey. I freaking love season 11. I don't know what it is for me, but season 11 has always been the standout season from the hit era and for most of my childhood. It's probably because of the time I was born. I was born 2004. I was around two or three when season 11 was airing. And I remember having to take alongs. I take along Billy, Madge, and Hector. They were awesome. I remember getting up to watch them on Milkshake. I, hell, I remember getting the season 11 DVD. Surprisingly, there's a lot of memorable characters and episodes that came from this season. Thomas and the Stinky Cheese, everyone knows this episode is disgusting. Come. Gordon and the Engineer is actually a really good episode. Not because it features Donald and Douglas, but that is a large factor of it. I love you. And Dream On is a really, really good story featuring Thomas and Spencer, who looks freaking amazing in this season. I'm sorry. There's some pretty banging new characters too. Madge has a really cool design, and it's really cool to see the engines being carried around on the road. Crash through a snowbank. Bust. <laughs> Hector is the kind of character that needs to happen more often. Having a truck that isn't troublesome and interacts with the engines more is a really good thing to see. And it gives the trucks more depth than just being one-dimensional assholes. Whiff is pretty cool, but not really in this season. I think it was handled a lot better in Misty Allen Rescue. There's not really much to say on him in this season. B Billy. Eh. I mean, he's a really cool looking engine, I'll give him that. But character-wise, he's... Very unlikable. I know that, sighed Billy. He pumped his pistons impatiently. You need braces, fam. You look like British Family Guy. I know I'm in the minority when I say this, but season 11 has my favorite visuals in the whole series. Well, besides season two. The yellow tint on the new 1080p HD cameras gives this really nice warm summer vibe to each set, and the greenery looks fantastic. In all, it's pretty obvious that season 11 isn't the greatest season by how many mediocre or straight up bad episodes there are, but for me it's a really guilty pleasure, and I feel like the visuals deserve to be appreciated by a lot more people. Next up is season 8, a season that is one half the most boring thing to ever exist, and the other half being episodes that range from meh to amazing. 
like I said in the It's Great To Be An Engine video, a few episodes from this season wouldn't be out of place in something like season 6 and 7, and that's a compliment. It's a very laid back season that doesn't try to do too much, as it was the first season in the hit era, and it was definitely the best season we had had until the next season on this list, which swiftly brings us on to season 17. Season 17 is decent. It was a stepping stone for Brenner and his team. There are some really bad ones in here like Steamy Stafford and the Afternoon Tea Express, but for the most part it's a warm and fuzzy season where when I watch it I always feel a sense of passion and love. And it really shows that the people who are working on the show now cared a lot more than the people who came before them. Overall, a really nice season. Coming in at 13th place is Season 18. Much like Season 17, Season 18 is a really down-to-earth and calm season. It doesn't try to do anything crazy or stupid, most of the time, and it knows when to try really hard. And when it does try really hard, it produces some of the best Thomas episodes, period. Yes, I said period. Taking the 12th spot is Season 19, the peak of the visuals in Thomas. I only really watch season 19 when I really want to feel something, and this season delivers. Its updated cast is fantastic, the new polished animation is glorious to look at, and the new intro is just the icing on the cake. It does have its odd bad episode, but most of the CGI seasons do, and that's why it's at number 12. Just missing out on the top 10 is season 20. This is where the unpopular opinions start to come in. Now don't get me wrong, this season is good, I just don't think it's as good as people say it is. It's bad episodes are just horrible and Thomas appears way too much. But other than that, I haven't really got much to complain about when it comes to season 20. It's a good season that's been talked about to death, and if you want to see an in-depth review, just watch Nike Tongue's video. Kicking off the top 10 is season 21. As I mentioned at the start of the video, there will be a few biased opinions on this list, and this is where the nostalgia comes in. If you've been following me on Instagram since 2017, which I mean I'm sure you all have even though I didn't even start my channel until a year later, I used to upload my reactions to the season 21 episodes when they would first air in the UK on TV at 7am in the morning. And that's where this gem of a video came from. <gasps> oh my god, bulgy. But yeah, long story short, I'm really nostalgic for season 21. Not only am I nostalgic for it, I just think it's a genuinely good season. Pretend that A Shed Forever doesn't exist and then boom, you've got a pretty good season there. I haven't got much else to say other than I just really like it. Let's continue. Just making it into the top 10 is season 6. Yeah, I still don't know if I like it or not. If you watch my channel, you'll know that I am an avid, well, I wouldn't say hater, I'm an avid season 6 disliker. I think. Yeah, guys, I, I still don't know. I keep switching between liking it and not liking it, and I've started to come to terms with it, and I've began to appreciate the other aspects of the season, like its music, thanks to my mate Oliver11GWR, who uploads the dubbing tracks for the episodes, and it, oh, it's amazing. The US dub of season 6 is, um, different, and the UK dub is perfect, literally perfect. But where this season is let down for me is its visuals. The blurry camera, the way the models don't stand out against the colour of the background, the horrible random change in aspect ratio for no reason, meaning the first batch of season 6 episodes either keep switching from 16x9 to 4x3, or they just awkwardly crop them into 16x9, meaning you can't see half of the bloody frame. The new characters in season 6 are great. Elizabeth has a wonderful voice in the UK and the US, Harvey just looks badass, the pack is the coolest thing ever, and Salty is just, well, salty. <laughs> Ducks. At the moment, I like it, but chances are, I'll warm up to it sooner or later. Coming in at 8th place is actually Season 1. Yeah, I'm probably going to get a shot for this. I've never been a Season 1 guy. Ringo's narration is eh. George Carlin is miles better in my opinion, by the way. It doesn't look the best, its stories are quite boring, and everything is just a bit messy. Then why did I place it above season 6 you may ask? Well, it's the first season, it's bound to be flawed, Ringo is getting into the swing of things, the crew was still getting used to stuff, and it's the season that started it all. I just can not dislike it. For what it stands for, it would be sacrilege if I didn't put it in the top 10. So here we are. Next up is Jack and the Pack, the first spin-off series we've mentioned. I love the pack, man. There's something so cool about the pack that I just can't explain. It might be the lovable characters, the fantastic voices Angelus gave them, the dope crashes, the large scale, everything is just so good. What's kind of weird about the series is that Angelus has energy. 
If you're not aware, Angelus kind of lost his charisma in season 7, which was filmed alongside this season and presumably recorded alongside it too. And Angelus has his charisma back, which I love to see. I made a video on the pack, so I'll leave a link to that in the description if you want to see me talk about it in more depth. Anyway, next one. Just missing out on the top 5 is season 7, by far the most controversial classic season of them all. Now, listen to me carefully. In the US, season 7 is not classic material. Yeah, season 7 in the US is garbage. It has terrible narration, nowhere near as good music as the Mike and Junior versions, and they use the season 8 roll call and the end song. From what I can gather, Hit Entertainment wanted season 7 to feel as much like season 8 as possible. Hence the music change, and that's probably why the US didn't get the full season 7 until 3 years later after it finished in the UK. But we're not here to talk about the shitty US version, we're here to talk about the UK one. Now I'm probably going to get hate for this, but I don't care. The UK season 7 is the most nostalgic piece of Thomas Media for me. Yeah, I'm not kidding. I've always liked season 7. As a kid it was my favourite, and you bet your ass, I lived on these DVDs. And I know people hate Angelus' narration in season 7, but I really don't mind it that much. I mean sure, it's trash compared to Angelus' narration from season 3 to 6, but he still has his moments. There's not much else to say other than I'm just really nostalgic for it. The newbies are all great, the music is fantastic, and while it got fumbled in the US, it will always hold a special place in my heart. Kicking off the top 5, we have Tugs. Oh, you don't know what Tugs is? Tugs was a spin-off slash sister series of Thomas the Tank Engine. It ran during 1989 and was also released onto VHS. It's well known for its more mature moments and tones, and while it is a bit dated... Hey, you guys, I need a tone. Oh, what do you know about it, you South American ape junk? It's still an amazing series. The soundtrack is absolutely breathtaking, the characters are literally perfect, the practical effects are top notch, and the whole series in general is just so good. I highly recommend you watch it, as well as this review right here, as it goes into a lot of detail about behind the scenes, and it also just goes into detail about the whole series as a whole. Coming in at 4th place is Season 4. While I'm not as big as a Season 4 fan as others are, I still can't help but adore this season. It's the best Thomas season visually, and it's a strong contender for the best Thomas season musically. Everything about Season 4 is amazing. Both the UK and the US narrations by Michelangelos and George Carlin are fabulous, and the songs from this season are an absolute treat. Season 4 is probably the most talked about classic season, so I'm just gonna stop it here. Kicking off the top 3, we have Season 5. Oh boy, Season 5. This season is insane. It's full of some of the most intense, some of the most frightening, and some of the most heartwarming episodes you can possibly get. There is so much variety. Again, like Season 4, the narration is top-notch from Angelus. I've never been a huge Baldwin guy, but hey, that's just me. I'll let this old VHS promo speak for itself. The humorous antics of Frankie Bugs and other stories. The heart-pounding adventures of races, rescues, and runaways. The whimsical fun of Make Someone Happy. Just missing out on the top spot is Season 2. Without a doubt, the most underrated Thomas season ever. Ringo has improved with his narration and is now damn near perfect. George Carlin shows off his vocal range, the stories for this season are some of the best ever, the new characters are the best the show has ever had, the music, the sets, the models, the arguments between the engines that make me doubt they even like each other. This season has it all. It's home to such gems like Edward's Exploit, The Deputation, Wrong Road, Ghost Train, Woody Barrett, Precious Predicament, I could go on for ages. I love season 2 so much. I'm sure you all know what's next. The season that embodies the magic of Thomas like no other, my favourite season of Thomas the Tank Engine, is Season 3. Season 3 is amazing. I would say it's perfect, but it isn't. No season is perfect, every one of them has its issues. But where the season succeeds is how it makes up for it. The first 16 episodes of Season 3 are truly something special. Almost all of them focus on a character we've already established, and establishes them even more. We get to see James's truly schemish side, we get to see Gordon's wise and kind side, we get to see Henry's soft side, we get to see Thomas's responsible side. All the main cast get their time to shine. The new characters are truly something too. Oliver is a great addition to Duck's branch line, and the two have great chemistry. 
Bulgy is a humorous one-off character who gets his comeuppance, and Mavis is a young and feisty Diesel who serves as a challenge for Toby to tackle. The visuals for this season are at their absolute best. Just watch Thomas Person the Post Train and it will speak for itself. The music in this season has the most variety of any season ever. The season introduces Michael Angelus, the best narrator ever, and George Carlin shines once again. This whole season is an absolute gem, something that should be cherished for years to come. And how you can apply that to all of the first five seasons. They all are prime examples of art in the children's entertainment industry, and they always will be.